Why would I build one of the most popular model kits on YouTube and make a video about it? Well, because almost none of those videos actually show you how to build the kit. I, I mean, you can get a general idea, but most, if not all of them, skip over the more challenging aspects of the assembly. And, and let me tell you, there's a, there's a bunch of them. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a fun little kit, and if you've not built this one, I highly recommend it. In fact, I will be building this one again. I mean, you can't just have one Jeep, right? Also, to a certain extent, this video will be as much about what not to do as it is how to. So, so let's go through the build. I'm going to go through it step by step, and I'll talk a little bit about the extra details that I've discovered that will definitely make this kit more enjoyable to build. Now, I'm not going to cover all the little sanding and scraping you need to do to clean up the parts. You should be able to handle that without my help. So, straight in, let's start on section one. Seems pretty straightforward. You're going to assemble the main components of the engine and install them on the chassis. Now, if you're going to paint the kit, and you should, I recommend holding off on installing the fan and painting it separately, especially if you're going to do a detailed paint job because once it's on the chassis, it is devilishly hard to get to the fan belts with a brush. Also, there's this bit on the front of the chassis that is part of the injection mold process. It has a name, but I don't know what it is. Its purpose is to allow the air somewhere to go so that you have a better chance of getting a crisp part in the injection mold but don't cut it off until you're ready to put the bumper on or, or the tow hitch option it, it'll give you something to hang on to while you're painting section two is pretty simple you will install the front and rear transfer cases and the support member uh, these went on without any trouble I, I suspect you'll have the same experience so on to section three uh, we'll add the suspension parts with the shocks and leaf springs and install the muffler with skid plate a couple of tips here would be to do the muffler first and put a little medium thick cement on the attachment points for the muffler. The, the attachment points are hidden under the skid plate pretty good and for me the thin stuff had a hard time getting in there so if you add the cement beforehand it should just stick right together. Also put the end of the pipe into the exhaust manifold first before positioning the muffler. It's just easier that way. When installing the leaf spring and the shock absorber, the shock goes on the outside of the frame. Yeah, I know, duh, right? But if you add a little dab of cement to the shock where it meets the frame, it'll help prevent you from breaking them off uh, while handling it during the rest of the build. At least that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. I'll, also, the front shock absorber goes between the frame and the rack and pinion. You would think that was obvious, but it took a second. Section 4 is crucial, so I recommend not doing parts of it, and here's why. When building models with tiny little fine parts, do your best to take into account the fact that most of us have big fat fingers and will break things. Uh, this is one lesson I tend to forget just about every time, and it comes back to bite me just about every time. Um, You'll have to judge for yourself what parts to do when to minimize this, but it's something you should take into account. Also, take care when removing these tiny little parts from the sprues because they will go flying or, or you can inadvertently cut a chunk off of the part that you need and then have to try to figure out how to glue it back together. Yeah, did that. So what to install? Uh, most of the big stuff is fine, so you can install the fuel tank, the firewall, uh, the hip pads, the, the rear body panel, uh, spare tire mount, and, and whatever this is, I don't have a clue. So if you do, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave me a comment and tell me what it is. Um, quick tip on the hip pads. If you turn the body on its side, gravity will do most of the work for you holding it in place until you can add that dab of cement and then make the final adjustment. So what not to install? Um, for me, it was the radiator along with the steering column and the shifters for, for those previous reasons stated. Uh, for painting reasons, you know, skip the radiator until you're ready to do the final assembly. Uh, the shifters and steering columns, you just hold off on those as long as you can. 
Uh, section 5 looks like a simple one. Just glue the seats to the frames. Uh, thing is, if you're not paying attention, you can miss the fact that the two front seats are different. So keep an eye on what part you cut off when so you don't get the seats mixed up. Also, I didn't install the folded up canopy. Again, this is for painting reasons and potentially staging it a little differently than uh, when it comes around to the final assembly. Section 6 uh, is a short one uh, for the time being. The only thing here I would install would be the dash and the horn. Uh, for painting reasons, the seats should be left out in, until later. Uh, section 7, skip it completely. Again, for painting reasons, and, and you'll thank me later. So, for section 8, uh, there are five wheels. Uh, the four main wheels and a spare. Uh, the main wheels come in two varieties. Uh, there's the front and the rear, and I'll show you how to tell those apart in a second. Uh, it's very straightforward. The parts are indexed, meaning there's a little tab and a notch, and you just twist it around until it falls into place, and then give it a dab of cement. Um, section 9. Again, skip it, but you'll want to come back during the final assembly because... This one details the difference between the front and the rear tires so that you don't get them backwards. Before moving on to section 10, you're going to need to make some big decisions about how you're going to paint it and to what level of detail you want to achieve. Now, a lot of this depends on your skill level, and I still consider mine to be intermediate at best. So uh, I've left as many things as many things disassembled as possible so it makes it easier to, to get as much detail as possible into the paint job. Um, I'm trying to do as detailed a paint job as my skills will allow me so I've assembled as much of it as I can that doesn't hide where the paint needs to go. Really all I installed here was the hitch onto the frame, uh, the four handles on the sides, and the support frame for the canopy because all the other things would just be blocking paint from getting where it needs to be. So I've left off the jerry can, the spare tire, and the top of the engine. Uh, same goes for section 11. Uh, you'll definitely don't want to install the windshields until you've got everything painted there. Uh, also, take your time here. Uh, the little wiper motors and the side supports are super fiddly and, and you'll need all the patience you have to make certain you get them in the right spot so they don't interfere with the glass. Um, as for the driver, I, I'm just forget about him for the moment. Uh, we're going to leave him setting and we'll come back to him last. Section 12 is another one of these crucial ones when it comes to painting decisions. It's similar to section 10 where you don't want to install everything until you've got some paint on it. The only things I would install here would be the lifting handles, the convoy light, and the front bumper or the tow hitch if that's the option you go with. You can leave the hood separate and if I had it to do over again I would have left off the axe and the shovel along with the side view mirror and the steering wheel because, you know, no surprise, I broke them both off while painting it and the implements are just going to be easier to paint when they're not bunched up on the side of the vehicle. At this point, I wouldn't assemble anything else until you're well into the painting process, so I think this is going to be a good place to stop, and we'll get everything primed up and ready to start laying down some paint in the next video. And that's going to be here on the left when it's ready, and thank you so much for joining me in this how-to-slash-not-to build uh, Tamiya's 132nd scale wheels Jeep. And if you enjoyed following along with me, I'd really appreciate it if you give the video a like and consider subscribing for more videos like this. Again, thank you so very much and go make something.